Good morning. It's great to be with you guys. It's a fantastic day, uh, and we're going to get right to our daily devotion. Um, as you may recall, we've been going through these different words that Paul uses. That It's a compound word that begins with kind of this idea of with or together, and then several other words. Today we're going to do two, because they're in the exact same verse, um, and it's really powerful. Um, so we're going to read through it, and then we'll get to talking about it. <clears throat> this is from 1 Corinthians 12. It says this, The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor, and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. This is our word for the day. And I don't know if you caught it. You have to think of, look for the words together or fellow or with or something like that. But at the very end of this, it said, if one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. So somehow Paul has taken these two things and combined them that uh, suffering together and rejoicing together like there it, this idea of unity that when the body but when the body is operating correctly when uh, Christ followers come together they suffer together when you see one suffering you suffer with them and we rejoice together when you see one rejoicing you rejoice together it's a fantastic thing. I had a friend who just had a baby, and I want to rejoice with he and his wife, with their family. It's, it's a fantastic thing. It's so exciting. But maybe you have suffering going on, or maybe you know someone who's suffering. How much, not more valuable, but just as valuable is it when you can sit with them, sit in the mud and mire of where they are, and spend time with them, and just suffer with them, absorbing some of the cost of that suffering yourself, having, letting the other person know that they're not alone, that, that literally they are able to suffer with you, um, it, whatever that means. Because uh, honestly, when someone deals with a death or when they deal with <clears throat> a bad diagnosis or just um, life change that's difficult. I, and we're, we're just about to hit another one of those. My, my daughter's about to move back up to college and have her own apartment, and it feels like my heart's being ripped out again, right? It's one of those things where, oh. <clears throat> now can someone really feel that? Well, not the way I, I'm feeling it, but they can sit with me. They can share the cost of that event. Just like um, when we gather together, when we sing to our king, uh, we, we rejoice, we have joy at the same moment. And it's not just a single one-to-one -one joy with God. It is like this giant 3D pyramid of rejoicing going up to God that we are all unified in the actual rejoicing. This is powerful stuff. And, and Paul, in this section of scripture on uh, body unity and spiritual gifting, <clears throat> he's actually putting those two thoughts together. It says, no, 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 no. This is how unified we are in the good times and in the bad times. And and if you really think about it, this is almost a a bride of Christ idea, right? It's, it's um, um, we, when you get married, you have, you have these vows that you give, you say to one another about how many good times, bad times, all of those things, right? Paul's likening our life kind of like that. And if you really think about it, one of the biggest metaphors in the Bible that, that um, is used is an idea of marriage, that Jesus is our bridegroom and the church is his bride. So until we get to the time of hope, until that new hope comes to us, 
we can live on the hope that we are literally the bride of Christ. And in the midst of that, we can have joy together and, and we can have sorrow together and we can suffer together. Um, these two words are powerful. Um, they just are saying joy with and suffer with. But really what brings it all home is that, that our bridegroom suffered when he didn't have to so that we could have the rejoicing of all rejoicing, right? We'd be invited in his presence with us. The marriage, um, our marriage to the Lamb of God, it's, a, it's an amazing idea. So today, I was hoping that you would consider maybe there's some rejoicing. Maybe some of you are hearing just down like in a funk, like I've felt that a lot of this time in shelter in place. Um, maybe you just need to rejoice with someone. Find someone who you know is in a good moment and rejoice with them. Don't be bitter. Let your bitterness fall away. Go to the cross and remember that you had one who suffered for you. And then maybe some of you need to take your good energy, the things that are going on right now. You, you're you in a good place right now of rejoicing. And maybe you need to sit and suffer with someone. Step into the madness of their lives and love on them as your king loved on you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much um, that you would suffer for us. Teach us to suffer well, both individually, but, but also together. Help us to be unified in suffering. Uh, Father, I, I think that this would actually destroy a lot of the, um, the conflict that even might, might exist in the church in this time of what we should do this or some think we should do that. A lot of that would go away if we understood how much you suffered and that we're called to suffer together and that we're called to rejoice together. Bring us together. Make us one, Father, as you are one. In your triuneness, you are one. Help us to be like that. Um, invite us back into that by your spirit. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Go out. Rejoice in your king. Know that he suffered for you and find someone who you might be able to walk with in, in a difficult time.